They were bombshell confessions to cold case murders that had left families without answers for more than 30 years. Today, Paul Apodaca, who confessed, is having second thoughts. His defense attorney is arguing those confessions were unconstitutional and cannot be used against him in court. KRQE investigative reporter Gabrielle Burkhardt has the very latest in the cold case confessions of an accused serial killer. After years and years of contemplating and searching this, I understand the whole pain that I've caused and I feel it mm -hmm. for families, for people that I've murdered and raped. Two years ago, a middle-aged Paul Apodaca gave an Albuquerque police detective a detailed confession to at least three cold case murders. He admitted to killing 21-year-old Althea Oakley in 1988, 13-year-old Stella Gonzalez that same year, and 18-year-old Caitlin Arquette in the summer of 1989. Caitlin Arquette apparently was the victim of a random traffic shooting. It's taken me so long to know how much I kind of caused Perhaps didn't understand that. Investigators say Apodaca gave them enough evidence to charge him in those three murders. Today, his defense attorney argues these confessions should be thrown out. In a motion to suppress evidence, Apodaca's attorney argues those confessions were unconstitutionally obtained, saying the first officers to pick him up that day from the University of New Mexico campus failed to read him his rights initially and failed to provide him medical treatment before questioning him. Feeling okay today? Is it kind of warm in here for you? A little bit. Let's see. You want me to take your hat off? It might keep you a little bit cooler. Got some water? The day Apodaca first confessed, he'd just been found sleeping outside and possibly suffering from heat stroke. Anything you say can be used against you in court. Do you understand that? Okay. Albuquerque Police Detective Jody Gonterman did read him his rights, but Apodaca's attorney now argues she, quote, did so only after refusing to allow paramedics to tend to Apodaca, and despite recognizing he did not seem to understand the situation and needed mental health treatment. But this wasn't the only time Apodaca told his story to investigators. And every once in a while, I don't know, when the anger would rise again, I'd go out just drive around with a rifle like the, like the hunter. In this confession, he provided even more detail, drawing diagrams, naming streets, and walking investigators through his crimes step by step. In 1995, Apodaca was sentenced to 20 years for raping a young family member. He told detectives a private investigator hired by Arquette's mother was on to him and paid him a visit in prison. I spent the last year in jail just crying and crying over all the things I've done. Sober, he said he's tired and wanted to come clean. It's not so much about relieving myself of that as it is to bring closure to the people I've harmed. But even that confession, his attorney now argues, should not be seen by a jury claiming, quote, law enforcement would have never questioned or investigated, let alone arrested Apodaca, absent his initial statement, which again he claims violated Apodaca's rights. A spokesperson for the Bernalillo County District Attorney's Office says, quote, we feel confident his constitutional rights were protected and the defense motion will be denied. Gabrielle Burkhart, KRQE Investigates. A judge has yet to rule on the motion to suppress his confessions in court. The next hearing for Apodaca's case is scheduled for September.